became my protector. He brought me out to a place of freedom. He saved me because he delighted in me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are in the midst of ordinary time. This is, uh, I mentioned yesterday to the kids that um, this is the growing season. That's why we use the, the color green. Um, in, the, in the ordinary moments of our life is really where we start becoming a disciple of the Lord. We become a student of the Lord. Just like if you think about being a student in your class, you have these big moments of tests and things like that. But the way that you really become a student is every single day doing your homework listening to the teacher, doing the exercises, little by little, that's how you learn. Because if you weren't doing any of that, and then all of a sudden try to just cram for a test, what's going to happen? It's just not going to be able to really sink in. And it's the same thing with the Lord, that he says, follow me each day. Not just these special days, but every single day, come and learn from me. So let's ask the Lord during this growing season, that will go all the way until November, that we might be able to just grow with the Lord. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners Christ to mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of Sirach. To keep the law is a great oblation, and he who observes the commandments sacrifices a peace offering. In works of charity one offers fine flour, and when he gives alms he presents his sacrifice of praise. To refrain from evil pleases the Lord, and to avoid injustice is an atonement. Appear not before the Lord empty-handed, for all that you offer is in fulfillment of the prophet percepts. It is just one's offering enriches the altar and rises as sweet odor before the Most High. The just one's sacrifice is most pleasing, nor will it ever be forgotten. In a generous spirit, pay homage to the Lord. Be not sparing of free will gifts. With each contribution, show a cheerful countenance and pay your tithes in a spirit of joy. Give to the Most High as he has given to you, generously according to your means. For the Lord is one who always repays, and he will give back to you sevenfold. But offer no bribes, these he does not accept. Trust not in sacrifice of the fruits of extortion, for he is a God of justice who knows no favorites. The word of the Lord. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Gather my faithful ones before me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Hear, my people, and I will speak, Israel. 
I will testify against you. God, your God, am I. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Offer to God praise as your sacrifice, and fulfill your vows to the Most High. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me, and to him that goes the right way I will show the salvation of God. To the upright I will show the saving power. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Peter began to say to Jesus, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you. There is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for, the sa for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come, but many that are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. So our Gospel talks about this offering of Peter saying, we, we've left everything, we're following you. And the Lord says that if you do this, if you let go of these things and put me first, then yes, there will be persecutions. You will go through difficult moments, but you're going to receive something so much greater. A hundred times more. Now, in our first reading, it talks about how we're supposed to offer to the Lord, how to make sacrifices to the Lord. This this, uh, this book is called the Book of Sirach, and it's one in which there is a rabbi, there's someone that is trying to help the people of Israel go deeper into their, into their law, into their understanding of who God is. And there's a couple things that are important here. It says, Appear not before the Lord, empty-handed, for all that you offer is in fulfillment of the precepts. And what that means is, just like in the time of the temple where you would come and you would offer these different sacrifices, you wouldn't want to come and not have anything in your hands, because then they'd say, well, where, where's your sacrifice? So even though we're not bringing to God sheep and cows and, and different things like that, we need to make sure that we take those things that are most precious in our hearts, the things that we really put a lot of time into, and make sure that we're giving that to God, that we're not coming before him saying, um, I want you to do something for me, and yet we don't have anything really to offer him within our hands. But then the person here says, be careful not to offer bribes. Have you ever heard of a bribe before? That's where you kind of like give someone something saying, if I give this to you, then you're going to do something for me. And what God wants to remind us is we need to come and give a free will gift. So it says also in here, it says a generous spirit don't spare giving these free will gifts. And, and what that means is that's the difference between a bribe 
or between something that you have to do. So there were certain sacrifices in the temple that a person had to offer. They had to, um, when someone was born, when there was a marriage, when there were all these different things, and these are things that you, you have to do. Just like when it's Mother's Day, you have to do something for your mother, right? And yet, what if that was the only time that you did something for your mother? When you have to. Or even when we're called to pray, or we're called during Lent to offer something up, but maybe that's when we have to. But what if we were to do something even when we didn't have to, but because we wanted to? That's the difference of the kind of sacrifice God is looking for. He's looking for children who love him, not coming to him just because they have to, but because they want to. This is, this is the difference and these free will gifts are offerings in which someone would come on days when they didn't have to, and they said, I'm giving this to you, God, just because I love you. And I'm not asking anything from you, but I'm just telling you that I love you, and I'm so grateful for the way in which you loved me first. Do you see how that's different? Versus, Lord, here's something and you need to do something for me. And if you don't do this thing for me, then you don't love me. You don't care about me. Have you ever kind of done that maybe to your parents? Mom, Dad, if you really, really loved me, you would let me stay up really late. Or Mom and Dad, if you really, really loved me, you would let me play on my Xbox a little more. Or you would get me this thing. You would, you would buy this thing for me if you really, really loved me. You'd give me this ice cream sundae. Have we ever done something like that before? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's good. That's good if you haven't. But, I mean, probably most of us have probably done something like that. Or maybe even with our teachers. I'm going to be nice to you, teacher, so that I can get a good grade. Versus, I should be nice to my teacher just because they care about me and they want me to learn. Do you see how that switches things around? When we, when we come and we offer something in gratitude, not because we have to, not because we're trying to make God do something for us, but simply because he's God. He's our Father that loves us. He knows what we need even before we ask him. So this is the way that we need to change maybe our way of praying. And even the way when you come to Mass, this is something that made a difference in my own life. Because I remember for a long time I was thinking, well, I have to come to Mass. And yet something switched in my life when I started to think about this free will gift to say, Lord, I'm coming not because I have to, but because I want to. Because you are so generous to me. You love me. And this is, this is the least that I can do to say, God, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving me my breath this day. Thank you for all the blessings that maybe I don't even realize. And so this is the kind of sacrifice the Lord wants to give, or that we need to give to the Lord. It becomes like a sweet odor coming up to the Lord, a fragrant smell. So ask the Lord for that grace to not give the offering because you have to or because you're trying to make God do something, but really go into your heart and say, in my prayer, in my actions that I do, am I doing them because I love God or because I have to? And that will help us be able to receive an even deeper joy in our relationship with the Lord.
us stand and bring our petitions before the Lord. We pray for our church. We pray that she might be strengthened in proclaiming the gospel to all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our world and for our nation. We pray for healing in the midst of division. That there might be a deeper spirit of charity and unity. And we pray also that our leaders might always work to defend those most vulnerable, most especially the unborn and the elderly, and all of those that, that whose dignity is threatened. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all those that are sick and suffering. We pray that we might reach out to them with the corporal and spiritual works of mercy, taking care of those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who have died and all of those who will die today, that in God's mercy we rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for the intention of this Mass that I'm offering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, pray for all the intentions within Our Lady's intercessory box and for all those prayers that have been given to us online and those within the silence of our hearts. Pray also for all of the 8th graders who will graduate today. They might be filled with wisdom and to offer a sacrifice of praise to God in their actions in high school. We pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, provide gifts to be offered to your name, and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion. We ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining you a holy people, 
he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held, that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us pray. 
Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Sing to the Lord, who has been bountiful with me. Sing psalms to the name of the Lord Most High.
this great. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by the same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thank you, God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God keep him with humbly pray. May the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who crawl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor. We're